Apple has officially updated its entry-level 14-inch MacBook Pro. It's available right now in stores, and the biggest change is that this is the new M5 MacBook Pro. It's one of three products this week to actually go on sale featuring this M5 chip. We actually did our hands-on impressions of the new M5 iPad Pro already, so if you want to check that out, feel free to click the link here or in the description. Uh, but in this video, we're going to go over my impressions of this new device, as well as everything that's new. And on that point, the everything new portion is uh, going to be a little short because, well, it's it's just a spec bump update. I mean, you get the M5 chip, like I just mentioned, and with that comes some pretty modest performance gains, especially in the GPU department in just one short year, which is very impressive. But obviously, someone who's used the M4 isn't going to be super thrilled about the M5 because, well, there's not a lot that's new. But if you're coming from anything else that's older, a few years older, even a Windows machine, this is exciting. And so I'm going to do my best to be as excited as possible and deliver you all of the new uh, improvements from the performance aspect of the M5 chip. So on that note, compared to the M4 chip that, again, Apple just launched back in May of 2024, the M5 delivers up to 15% faster multi-threaded CPU performance, up to 30% faster overall graphics, 45% faster ray tracing performance for all you uh, MacBook gamers out there, and 27.5% higher unified memory bandwidth, which is actually pretty key here since uh, this will play a pretty big role or a decent role in some of the performance improvements that we'll see with these machines. In addition to general performance claims, Apple has also published a set of specific real-world workload results showcasing measurable gains in AI-driven applications. So four times peak GPU compute performance for AI. You have 3.6 times faster time to first token for LLM. 1.8 times faster Topaz video enhancing processing. 1.7 times faster Blender ray tracing rendering. And 2.9 times faster AI speech enhancement in Premiere Pro, which piques my interest a little bit as an editor here. But uh, there are other improvements that Apple has made with this chip compared to last year, like its third generation uh, for ray tracing engine, second generation for dynamic caching, enhanced shader cores. All of this really ultimately most likely won't matter to most of you out there, in my opinion. Uh, but just take our word for it and Apple's word for it that the M5 chip is much better than the M4, obviously. Now, the model that I have here is the base model. So it comes in at $1599, I believe, and it has a 10-core CPU, a 10-core GPU, 512 gigs of storage, and 16 gigs of RAM. Also inside the box, from that note, unboxing experience will also give you a USB-C power cable, Mag MagSafe cable, and a 70-watt charger, which is important to note because in certain countries and regions, like the UK, for example, you will most likely not get that charger in the box, but instead will have to purchase it separately. So something to keep in mind. But here in the US, I have one inside of the box. Now, the model that I have here with the M4 is essentially the same thing, but with slightly more SSD storage at one terabyte, which I recommend you do the same if you're looking to keep this machine for a while. That storage can get filled up pretty quickly. But every other spec is the same. 10 core GPU, CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, etc. Obviously, this has the M4 versus the N5. I did run some benchmarks with Geekbench and uh, Blackmagic disk speed test for the SSD, which we'll get into in just a second. But as you can see here, uh, we're pretty much getting what we expected, some pretty modest gains here, especially in the GPU department, but also in single core and multi-core scores. Now, now, the SSDs on the new MacBook Pros are also supposed to be about two times faster uh, in read and write speeds. And so we ran the Blackmagic disk speed test to see exactly what we were getting with those speeds. And as you can see here, we were getting just about two times the performance. So we got about 6,000, over 6,000 in both read and write compared to like 3,000s, low threes in read and uh, like low threes and high twos. And now one thing to keep in mind, this is a benchmark app. Take these results with a grain of salt. I will be doing a real world review and some real world tests. And I also know that other people have done other tests using different applications and it's gotten different results. The speeds were a lot closer together, I think, in some of those tests. So again, take it with a grain of salt and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our real review very soon. Now, you can also opt to get the nano texture display for an additional cost. Can't remember if it's one or two hundred dollars off the top of my head, but I do have it on the M4 model. I do not have it on the M5. This is just the standard glass. So now you can kind of get a side by side of what that looks like. But I really liked my nano texture time. Uh, on the M4, I think it's really great if you have an environment with a lot of windows. My last office was floor to ceiling windows everywhere. And so it was very reflective. 
Here, there are some windows, but it's not as bad. So I just didn't think I needed it. But if you're working outside a lot or any highly reflective environment, I think you'll absolutely want to get nano texture. You will really enjoy it. You can also configure this new model to feature four terabytes of SSD storage. I think the last generation, the M4, you were only able to max out at two terabytes. RAM for both, you can max out at 32 gigs. And that's pretty much it when it comes to what's new. And if you're coming from something that's a lot older, maybe you haven't even seen this design. I believe it's been out for at least three to five years now, uh, but it still feels fresh to me. This redesign features a 14 inch display for this model, a liquid retina XDR display, thousand nits of brightness, 1600 peak nits for HDR, has a 120 hertz ProMotion display, which gives you that buttery smooth feeling when scrolling and navigating throughout the OS. And it also comes in space black and silver. Obviously, I have the space black version here. I think it looks really clean, but so does silver. You do get Touch ID as a power button, but also for authentication, Apple Pay, etc. I mean, it's the same MacBook Pro that it's been for the last few years. But if you're coming from something that's not a MacBook Pro, maybe a MacBook Air, this is what you can expect. It's got a little bit more power and a little bit more uh, for those who need a little bit more, especially if you need some more ports. The Air does not give you three Thunderbolt 4 ports, an HDMI and SD card slot. And you do also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on this as well. So yeah, there's more ports. There's a little bit more power, uh, a little bit bigger if you get the 14 inch model compared to the 13. And uh, it's just a little bit more pro, but it is the entry level aspect. The M4 Pro and M4 Max are still on sale. Um, also, if you look here, there is a notch for the MacBook Pro, but you either love it or you hate it or don't care. I don't care. But there is a 12 megapixel selfie camera with support for center stage and desk view. So that's also there if you need to take a lot of video calls. But yeah, all in all, it's a lot of the same. A decent performance increase and power efficiency increase over the M4 from last year. But obviously, this isn't for those people. You should just stick to your M4, maybe an M3 even. But if you have N2 or older, or if you're coming from a MacBook Air that's older, or perhaps a Windows laptop, and you're looking to break into Mac OS and all that's good with Mac OS 26, which you should check out all of those videos that we did on the channel as well. I think you'll be really happy with this 14 inch entry level MacBook Pro with the M5 chip. It'll be a great fit for you. But let me know in the comments down below. What do you think about this chip, this machine, the other M5 iPad Pro and Vision Pro that came out? We'll be doing a Vision Pro video very, very soon. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss all of that. And of course, as usual, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you around in the next video.